everybody, E here. Uh, welcome back to From the Desk. This is the third time I've shot this video, not because of any technical difficulties, but because I keep stumbling on my words. Um, this is a very confusing one, so um, we are going in order. I'm going to tell you the order just in case I say the wrong thing. We are going from third person subjective to third person objective to third person omniscient <laughs> to uh, third person free slash indirect to third person alternating. That is the sequence of styles that we're going to be covering and this was probably going to be a longer video. I will try to add my own examples of books. They might be my own books. They might be other authors books of books, good books in these styles. Um, there are, you're going to find more styles in third person than any other uh, POV. Uh, first person, you can have first person, just regular first person, and then you have first person omniscient, which is super rare. And then second person is just second person. So, um, what is third person? Once again, we're going back to Wikipedia for the uh, definition um, so that I get this exactly right. Um, in the third person narrative mode, each and every character is referred to by the narrator as he, she, it, or they, but never as I or we, first person, or you, second person. This makes it clear that the narrator is an unspecified entity or uninvolved person who conveys a story and is not a character of any kind within the story, or at least is not referred to as such. The only time I have read this, um, read an I in a third person book, um, is with Stephen King's It. Now, I've heard it argued that after the flood, the after the flood chapter in the beginning where he uses I as the narrator, that when he's not in Mike Hanlon's, right, uh, in Mike Hanlon's telling of the story later in the book, the flashbacks, um, when at the very beginning he's using I in the after the flood chapter, um, the reason why I don't think that's Mike Hanlon is because he knows specifics about what Pennywise and Georgie say to each other, and Mike Hanlon wasn't there for that. Um, so that would be the only time that I've seen where a third-person omniscient narrator used I. Otherwise, you have to stick to those rules. Now, King Stephen King can get away with it whatever he wants to. You, got, you also got to take that into account. And you're going to see people in reviews who complain about that kind of thing because it's confusing when he's saying I, but he's telling a story from third person. Now... Um, third person subjective. Yes, I am reading the titles off here, um, off of Wikipedia, but just to try and keep on track. Um, third person subjective, or um, as I've heard it, is third person close. Um, close third person. Uh, that's subject. It's literally what it means. Subjectively, subjective. You know, you're in a character's head and giving that character's thoughts and opinions on. Let's say, let's give a a rough. Um, idea, let, let's example, like, they're walking down the hallway. You're going to have them think um, the wallpaper was shitty, or whatever you want to say, the wall, this crappy wallpaper, um, something like that, whereas in, in objective, which we'll get to next, they wouldn't say that, they would just they would describe the wallpaper objectively because one man's trash is another man's treasure, all that stuff. So, back to subjective. You are going to stick with one person and you are going to get deep into their thoughts, um, whereas with the second, the second style, third person objective or third person limited is another way to say that. You are going to stick with one person, but you are not going to give that character's thoughts and opinions on things. You are going to be objective, which means you wouldn't say that the wallpaper is shitty, crappy, whatever. You wouldn't say that. What you would say is that the wallpaper had flowers on it, whatever. Um, and you wouldn't even give an opinion on what the what the flowers, you know, what the character thought about the flowers. It's literally that strict. Um, most third person stories are written in third person close. It's just a it's a very easy it's a it's a more relatable way. Um, the third person objective. I can't I can't even think of a book that I've read, and I'm I'm just looking around, glancing around the office, trying to. I, I can't think of one. Um, every single book I've read in third person has been third person subjective. So objective is another rarity, just like first person uh, omniscient. 
So, next. Um, one of my favorite story telling devices is third person omniscient but it is so rarely done right um third person omniscient is you have you head hop without alternating chapters okay so you are it's going to be the same stream there's not going to be page breaks chapter titles anything in between different characters thoughts bill walked down the hallway and thought the wallpaper was shitty barbara walked down the hallway and thought the carpet felt like this you know, you're going to, but what you want to try and do is, well, not try, You what you want to do is every single paragraph is going to be from a different person's point of view. This can get super confusing, and I don't suggest doing it, but if you want to see it done well, uh, Dune by Frank Herbert is a masterclass in omniscient narration. Another good one that is omnisciently narrated is uh, Mystery Walk by uh, Robert McCammon. Uh, he he did he does a lot of third person um, omniscient so he's an author to check out if you want to go there. Uh, next we have third person free slash indirect which throws an entire wrench in the gear works for everything. It is a mixture. It is a mixture of objective and subjective. So you have both. It, let let me read you what uh, Wikipedia says. Maybe it'll make more sense to you. Um, the third person indirect style or free indirect style is a method of presenting a character's voice freely and spontaneously in the middle of an otherwise third person non-personal narrator. Now, I do this in Cruelty. Um, if you've read my novel Cruelty, I do it constantly. I give the I give objective things and then I jump into and I thought I was doing something wrong. In fact, I was told I did something wrong, but I wanted to write the book the way I wanted to write the book. And if people didn't like it, Oh well, that was my mind my mindset at the time because when I wrote that book, I was in a bad place. All the pain that I was going through with my back, um, I I was having problems with mobility, wasn't able to move. Um, all that came out, and I just didn't care um, how that book, how people accepted that book. I just wanted it out of my head, and I'll be damned if when I got done with it, it wasn't a decent experience. Um, so I do that, um, with that, I did that in cruelty without even realizing I was doing it. I was told to change it and I didn't, but it's, it's actually a thing. So, um, now next third person alternating third person alternating is the last topic of discussion in this video. Third person alternating is not third person omniscient and it is definitely not head hopping. If you read a book and eat and there are POV chapters where you have one from Peter, one from Barbara, one from Bob, one from Tony, one from you know Deborah, whoever. If you have George R. R. Martin's a Sound of I a Song of Ice and Fire is written in third person alternating. Um, you alternate between the characters, but each character has their own specific chapter wherein it's either third person objective or third person subjective. So if you read reviews about people saying that those books head hop, or that is not the correct terminology. You are not head hopping. Um, what you are, omniscient, is where you head hop in the narrative. You are literally bouncing around between those things. So get that, get that thought in your head. Third person omniscient is different than third person alternating because, because of the chapters. You're going to have, you're, you were literally telling the reader, you were holding the reader's hand and saying, look here, this is a chapter from so-and-so's point of view. Whereas in Omniscient, you're going to do that at the beginning of paragraphs instead of the beginning of chapters. So I think I covered everything. Um, when I first started this series, I wanted it to be a writer's vlog about what I'm doing and where I am with my writing right now. Um, and I'm going to tack this on to the end. Once again, I'll be live after this episode between 9 and 10 uh, Central Standard Time. Um, and then just to talk about this topic right here, got to stay on topic. Um, but then I'll do a hangout and chat tonight at on 5-6-2018. I'll be doing a topic, uh, topic list or just a hangout and chat tonight at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time or 20 hundred hours. Um, where I'm at with my own writing right now, I'm kind of frustrated. Um, I am going to have to rewrite a book that I have already rewritten five times. Yes, I'm talking from the ground up. Um, I'm going to have to rewrite it um, to fix some things because I am not happy. And uh, the most recent beta reader pretty much 
I pretty much agreed that I didn't stick the landing. Um, the problem with this book is I have an idea in my head and I have a theme and every time I get that theme, every time I write the book, that theme is not present. Um, and I've had somebody read the first draft, second, third, different people have been reading these drafts. I'm running out of people to read this book. Um, and nobody is catching what I am, you know, nobody's catching what I'm throwing, throwing out there. Um, so I am going into the sixth rewrite, possibly, uh, probably I'm, I'm, I'm fighting with it, folks. I'm really fighting with it. A full rewrite of a 107,000 word book. Um, that's, that's nuts to, to rewrite that, that many times, but I'm just not happy with it. So we're going to have to do it. Um, luckily I got an extension on from the publisher or else I'd be in some trouble right now. Um, because I'm not going to publish something that isn't up to my standards. Some things sneak through, sure mistakes are made, but you can't do anything about them once it's out there. Um, like I said on stream, uh, one night, this is all practice until you hit publish. Maybe I even said it on from the desk. I can't remember. Um, another thing is, while I'm procrastinating, this is how a working author procrastinates, by the way, by working even more on stuff he shouldn't be working on. Um, while I am trying, while I am debating, or I'm procrastinating, um, while I am debating uh, whether or not I need to rewrite this book again, I've written four short stories. Uh, so I am being productive. I wrote uh, MRE... I wrote uh, a lonely, what did I call it? A lonely parking space for cars. Oh, no, a parking space for lonely cars. Um, a sound that haunts. And most recently, as of yesterday, or today as I'm shooting this video, as of yesterday, I finished one called A Drawer, Drawer, you know, um, Full of Pretty. So those, those are done. Um, the first two are marinating. And I'll get back to them uh, once I get done, you know, once I am okay with the short stories. I don't do my normal, you know, marinate for forever with the short stories because um, they don't carry as much weight as a novel. Um, it, they're probably not going to change as much. Um, but I also seem to see problems more quickly with a short story. Anywho, so that's where I'm at with my own writing. Um, at this point, I'm just rambling. I'm super exhausted, super tired. Somehow, I had three projects all come due at one time, and it's just bad organizational skills on my side. The best of us, you know, the the best of us have these problems. So, um, but I think that's everything. If you have any questions, leave them down there in the doobly doo, and I will get to them um, as I get to them. Uh, one thing is, I want to know where you want to go. Um, I think I have one more uh, video, and I'm going to talk about narrative voice. Um, I might even talk about, uh, let's see here, let's say, like, yeah, because I think narrative voice would be like epistolary and things like that. Um, but what I want to know from you guys is, is there anything in the POV topic that you want me to cover specifically? like um, Unreliable Narrator, I'll get to that that kind of thing. Um, if you want me to do videos on those in this series, let me know. Otherwise, the next video will be the last one, and that's just narrative voice. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, please leave them down there in the doobly-doo, and I'll get to them when I get to them. Um, but until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been From the Desk. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.